The most recent addition to the United States fleets of aircraft carriers is the USS Gerald R. Ford. The aircraft carrier is 1,092 feet long, has a crew of 5,500 people, and can simultaneously carry more than 75 aircraft. It weighs approximately 100,000 tons. All of that adds up to a ship that needs a truly massive anchor to chain and hold steady. With all of that weight, you have to wonder, how does the US Navy lower its massive anchor chain into the water? The anchor and chain system that the USS Ford carries is an extremely ponderous weight. The weight of the anchor itself is 30,000 pounds. The chain length is 1,440 feet, weighing at 136 pounds per link. The aircraft carrier, which cost $12.9 billion, is the first ship in the first new class of aircraft carriers to be built in the past four decades. It'll be followed by the USS John F. Kennedy and the USS Enterprise. In 2023, it's anticipated that the Ford will sail to foreign lands for the first time. As we know, the seas are highly variable environments constantly subject to the whims of the environment. Because of this, anchors are the most reliable method since the beginning of time for any maritime vessel to use any time there is a need to temporarily station or halt a vessel anywhere in the middle of the sea or any place near the coast. In layman's terms, an anchor is a device that can be compared to the parking brake found in an automobile. Its purpose is to keep a ship or other watercraft anchored in one place for a predetermined amount of time, preventing it from being moved or steered in an undesirable direction by the myriad of environmental forces that can be found in an ocean environment, such as winds, waves, or currents. It does this by lodging or partially burying itself into the holding ground, which in this case is the bottom of the seabed or sea floor. In this way, an anchor stabilizes the vessel and prevents it from moving away from its anchored point. The quantity of the anchor's grip required is generated by the combination of its weight and the degree to which it has sunk into the ground underneath it. By itself, the anchor is the simplest part of a ship's ground tackle. The anchors, chains, cables, and other equipment used to secure a ship at anchor. The stockless, US Navy or Admiralty anchor, which all look roughly the same, is the type of anchor that is used in most US Navy ships. They're not like the stock anchors typically portrayed in the works of literature, movies about pirates and even the symbol of the uniforms of the United States Navy and the United States Coast Guard. The stocked anchor consists of a central shank at the end of which two upward curved arms in opposing directions. Each of these arms is provided with a large forged fluke that acts like a shovel to dig into the bottom of the anchoring location. A lengthy bar joined to the shank at an angle perpendicular to the direction of the arms and flukes can be found near the top of the stock. Therefore, when the anchor hits the bottom of the ocean, the stock causes it to lie in such a fashion that one of the two flukes is poised to dig into the ground below. An effective stockless anchor can be used in place of the earlier model since, as the name suggests, it doesn't require a stock. It is intended to be placed in a horizontal position on the bottom of the ocean, and it has a considerably simpler construction with only a single moving member, which can either be a bearing or a bushing, and it connects the shank to the two flukes. When the device is deployed on the bottom, applying force to the anchor chain will cause the two flukes to rotate downward and dig into the bottom below them. Therefore, the bearing between the shank and the flukes functions similarly to an axle, making it possible for the flukes to interact with the bottom. The system is appealing not just for its ease, but also for its efficiency, which is the result of a low center of gravity, which causes it to be inclined to dig into the ocean floor. Step-by-step -step procedure of dropping the heavy chains on board aircraft carriers. The anchorage is approached very slowly, at a speed of fewer than three knots, with the dinghy secured in davits or tethered alongside the boat, and the anchor is dropped short. As the crew prepares to lower the anchor, they check to ensure that the end of the rope attached to the dinghy painter is not submerged in the water. There is often a crew member forward looking for any reef, because coral reefs tend to abruptly erupt from deeper water, having a depth sounder on hand is usually beneficial in these situations. Isolated coral heads, or bommies, may be outside of the main reef line. When viewed from above in the water, the typical color is yellowish-brown. The reef is best seen with Polaroid sunglasses and at low tide. To determine the depth of the water and whether or not there are any obstacles in the area, certain crew members have been tasked with making a circuit around the intended location of the anchor drop. When the sun is at a low angle in the afternoon, between 3 and 4 o'clock, 
the sun angle becomes too low to show the difference in color between shallow and deep water. When anchoring, to establish the scope, the quantity of chain to be put out, the crew uses the depth meter, the chart or the lead line to determine the depth. Then they consult the tide tables to determine whether or not there will be an increase in depth. Then they multiply the total by 4 to get the minimum length of anchor chain that should be put out. If the depth of the water at low tide is 8 meters and the depth of the water at next high tide is 2 meters, the total depth of the water is 10 meters. You get a minimum chain length of 40 meters when you double that number by 4. Based on the calculations on this illustration, under no circumstances should you ever extend less than 35 meters of chain. The location of where the anchor is going to be dropped is marked down. The carrier is then brought to a complete stop at this point. The chain is then gradually unwound as the carrier continues to float. The wind or the tide is allowed to push the carrier against the current until the chain becomes taut. The last test consists of running the engine very slowly in reverse for anywhere between 5 and 10 minutes to ensure that the anchor successfully holds its position. When everything is finished, the snubbing rope is attached and the additional chains are let out until the weight is on the rope. Sailors on an aircraft carrier take a few steps to ensure that the anchor has taken effect. First, they use their hands to physically feel the chain while it's being taut or while the carrier is in reverse so that they can detect any vibrations on the chain. If the chain continues to vibrate after it has been completely stretched out, then the carrier is most likely dragging the anchor and it's necessary to either re-anchor the carrier or let out more scope to enable the anchor to dig in correctly. If the chain continues to vibrate after completely stretched out, the carrier is most likely dragging the anchor. No matter how much scope is let out, there are instances when the anchor will still drag because it has picked up a piece of coral, rock or bottom rubble. If the anchor has taken effect, little eddies will be seen coming alongside the carrier from the stern towards the bow. This is caused by the prop wash at the carrier sitting still and not moving back in response to the engine being in reverse. More chain is let out if severe winds are buffeting the carrier or if it's not at an anchorage that offers protection from the wind, holding is improved as a result. That'll be all for today's video. Thanks for staying tuned. Let us know what you think of this topic in the comments. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can always get to watch more amazing videos like this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.